We're rolling over here, we're rolling over there, and we're rolling up top. Let's go. Does your head ever hurt when you're trying to figure out how to create multicam clips or why your multicam footage is not syncing or how to efficiently manage all of your clips in a multicam workflow? Or do you struggle with one of the many other common problems that people have with multicam clips? Well, in this video, I'm going to simplify all of that for you. And by the end, no matter what your skill level is with multicam clips, you'll know absolutely everything you need to know about multicam editing in Final Cut Pro. I'm also going to explain why I use multicam clips, even if I'm only using one camera angle. But first, there are four incredibly easy things you need to be doing when shooting footage for multicam edits that will solve many of the common problems before they even become problems. Number one is to make sure you record audio on all of your cameras. This is going to help us sync things up automatically later on. Number two, make sure your cameras are all set to the same video frame rate. And number three, that the audio sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz on all devices. This will help you avoid having your audio drift out of sync over time. And number four, and this is not essential, but clap at the beginning of your recording. This is useful with sync, especially if you need to do any manual syncing. But just having dialogue on each of the video clips is good enough for Final Cut Pro to sync without a clap. Now that you've recorded your footage, it's time to create a multicam clip the right way. Because if you don't, you'll kick yourself later when you run into problems. So I've dropped all of my footage in here and you'll see we have two clips each from Cam A, Cam B and Cam C, as well as one audio file from my audio recorder. The next step is super important when you have multiple clips or files on each camera because you're telling Final Cut Pro to group certain clips together. If you're working with lots of clips from multiple cameras and you skip this step, your multicam clip may end up looking like this, with each clip on its own angle, which is a total mess. Instead, it could and should look like this, where all the Cam A clips are on one angle and all the Cam B clips are on the next angle. So to set the multicam clip up the right way, I'll go ahead and select the two Cam A clips, come over to the inspector window, click on the info tab, make sure the drop down here is set to basic and change the camera name to Cam A. I'll do the same for Cam B, and then again for Cam C, and then for the audio, I'll set the camera name just to audio. I can select all of the files, right click and select new multicam clip. Instead of untitled multicam clip, I'll give it a more meaningful name. And then most importantly, make sure that use audio for synchronization is checked. You can set your video format and resolution, but make sure the frame rate is set to the same frame rate you shot your clips at and hit OK. If you're not sure about the frame rate or sample rates of your files, select the file in the browser window and head over to the inspector window to check. With your multicam clip created, you can drop it onto your timeline and it's best to make sure your timeline settings match as well. I do everything in 4K at 23.98 frames per second. Next, you'll want to hit Command Shift 7 to show the angle viewer, which will let you see all of your angles at the same time. You can also find it in the view menu under show in viewer. I like to also hide the browser window using the shortcut Control command one or you can find it in the window menu under Show in Workspace. Under the settings drop down, you can choose the number of angles you want Final Cut Pro to display at the same time. If I scrub through the timeline, you can see everything is in sync. We're going to talk about how to actually edit the multicam clip on the timeline in just a second. But first, we need to understand what's going on inside the multicam clip. So I can double click on the multicam clip to open it up. The first thing I want to point out is that the camera names we assigned earlier are now the angle names and all the Cam A clips are in the Cam A angle, which makes working with multiple clips from each camera way easier. You have the monitor icon here, which allows you to select which angle you want to monitor in the viewer window. The little speaker icons also allow you to monitor audio from one or more of the angles by toggling them on and off. It's important to know that choosing what audio to monitor here inside the multicam does not change the audio that will play back on your timeline. I'll show you how to set that up when we're back on the timeline. You can click on this down arrow to add or delete an angle. Let's assume we forgot to add one of the cameras. We can create a new angle, let's call it Cam D, and I'll just use clips from one of the other angles for this example. I can copy the clips, toggle the monitor on for the new angle and paste them. To sync those clips up to what has already been synced, I can select the clips, hit this down arrow and click on sync selection to monitoring angle. And Final Cut Pro quickly syncs those clips. You can also click and drag on the three lines here at the end to rearrange the order of the angles in the angle viewer. So let's go back to the timeline. You can do that by clicking on this little back arrow over here. If I play my clip back, I can use the numeric keys one, two and three to cut between the angles while I'm watching the footage. If I stop playback, I can hit T to activate the trim tool and adjust the timing of these cuts if I need to. At this current point in the edit, the blue selection in the angle viewer shows us which video angle is active and the green selection shows us which audio angle is active. 
If it's yellow, it means that the same angle is active for audio and video. Using these numeric shortcuts like 1, 2 and 3 will change the video and audio angles according to what these icons are set to up top here. The first one is video and audio, which means when we switch to angle 2, we'll see the footage from angle 2 and we'll also hear the audio from angle 2. While this is useful, I find that 99% of the time I want to switch video angles only, which is the second icon here. So we can switch between multiple cameras, but leave the audio angle as is. This is often the case because there's a separate audio track for your dialogue, or maybe your microphone goes directly into cam A and you don't want to switch the audio to possibly the camera mic on the other angle. The third one is to switch audio angles only. Once you've made the cuts, you can of course right click on a clip and you can change the active view angle and audio angle from the drop down menu for that specific clip. If you want to change multiple clips, you'll notice that the drop down options are grayed out, but you can still select all of the clips you want to change and head over to the inspector to change the active video or audio angles there in bulk. Here are a few common problems that you might encounter and some workflow tips to make your life easier. I've seen a lot of people struggle with having multiple people speaking in a multicam. Maybe person 1's audio is going to cam A and person 2's audio is going to cam B. Instead of switching audio angles the whole time, since sometimes people might talk over each other, you can select your multicam clip and go over to the audio tab in the inspector and under the audio configuration section, you can toggle on both audio sources. Now this multicam clip will play back audio from both of those cameras and you can switch the video angle only when you make cuts. But probably the most common problem is being able to fine tune the sync. And it's important to fully understand the difference between frames and subframes in order to do so. Essentially, you can move audio only files one or more frame at a time, but you can also move the audio only files in subframes, which is a fraction of a frame. Video files can move in frames, but not in subframes. So if you look at this example where I clapped, you can see that the audio waveform on both the video file and the audio file are slightly out of sync. Barely enough to notice in most cases, but if you're working with music videos or you have multiple speakers on different microphones, you might experience phasing where two audio sources are slightly out of sync and it makes the audio sound terrible. This is how you could fix that. You could select the clip you need to adjust and hit the comma key to move it one frame to the left. The period key will move it one frame to the right. You can also hold down shift when you hit the comma or period keys to move the clip 10 frames at a time. You'll see when I move this clip by one frame, it still doesn't line up perfectly. But because it's an audio only file, I can move it in subframes. So I'll hold down option and then I'll hit comma or period to move the clip in subframes. Notice how that's a much finer adjustment. I can also hold down option and shift to move the clip 10 subframes at a time. Another common problem is that playback lags when you have multiple video files trying to playback at the same time. If you're experiencing that problem, select the multicam clip on your timeline Hit Shift F to reveal that clip in the browser and then right click on it and select Transcode Media. From here, you can choose your preferred proxy settings to create proxy media, which is essentially lower resolution footage that is not as processor intensive to play back. And doing it this way will create proxies of all the clips inside the multicam and then you can switch to proxy view from the viewer window over here. But remember to switch back to original media before exporting. As far as workflow goes, I almost never color grade the multicam clips themselves on the timeline. The reason for this is because instead of having to grade each instance of the multicam clip or to copy and paste attributes, I can simply open up the multicam clip, grade the clip once, and anytime I switch to that angle on my timeline, I'll see the graded version. Also, if I need to make changes to the grade, instead of having to remove effects and copy and paste again, I can open up the multicam clip again, make the change and go back to my timeline and it's been updated everywhere. Earlier, I also said that I'm also going to explain why I use multicam clips even if I'm only using one camera angle. And the reason for that is because I can use the color grading workflow I just mentioned on the single clips as well, even if there is nothing else in the multicam clip. Now, I have a separate audio file for my dialogue, so I usually create a multicam clip in the exact same way I showed you earlier for those two files. But if your audio and video are in one video file, you can still create a multicam clip by selecting any other clip and right clicking to create the multicam clip, and then you just delete the clip you don't need. You're left with one clip in the multicam, but now it has all the same workflow benefits. You could argue that you could use a compound clip and do the same workflow. You absolutely can. I just prefer using a multicam clip because if I apply any effects to it, I don't have an issue where I might break the compound clip apart. Now, sometimes audio drifts out of sync, meaning the clip starts off in sync and over time, the audio slowly drifts out of sync. If you've ever experienced that, then this video is going to save you hours of pulling out your hair. So go watch that right now.